Let's find the domain and range of the function f of x equals 1 over x squared minus 2x minus a. We note, since f of x is a rational function, the domain will be all x except where the denominator is equal to 0. That means our work is going to be in finding the range. Now, our first approach is to consider the graph of f of x. So recall, I want the domain and range of a function if we have the graph. We have two tests. For the domain, we use a vertical line test. So if I take any x on the x-axis, take the vertical line through x, if that intercepts our graph at any point, then x is in our domain. Likewise, to find the range, we apply the horizontal line test. So if we take any y on the y-axis, take the horizontal line through y, that intercepts our graph at any point, then we have y in the range. Now, for a warm-up, let's apply our two tests to f of x equal to x squared minus 2x minus 8. Now, this function has its graph upward-facing parabola. Okay, the coefficient of x squared is positive. If we factor, we find that the x-intercepts are going to be at minus 2 and 4. So for a rough graph, our picture looks like this. Now, we apply the vertical line test. We see that for any x on the x-axis, the vertical line cuts the graph at some point. So our domain is going to be all x. To find the range, we need to do a little bit more work. So here's what we do in the case for parabola. We need to complete the square. So the idea is going to be, if I complete the square, I could find this vertex. Then once I have that, I know the smallest value of y, where the horizontal line through y cuts our graph. Now, to review completing the square, okay, our formula is x squared plus 2ax equals x plus a squared minus a squared. Two things to note. First, to use it. So let's say I want to apply it to our function. I would have x squared plus 2ax. So we look for the x squared and the x term here. We take the coefficient of the x, which is minus 2. Set that equal to 2a. So if I have 2a equal to minus 2, then a is equal to minus 1. And then our x squared minus 2x can be rewritten as okay, x minus 1 squared. Then we take the minus 1 squared, which gives me a 1. Put a minus sign in front of it. Okay, you note, know, whatever number that comes out of here, we're always going to wind up with a minus sign there. Okay, this number, a squared, is always zero or a positive number. Okay, second point, memorizing completing the square. Well, there's not a lot to this. Just remember, all you need to do is square x plus a. So that'll give you x squared plus 2ax plus a squared. And then we just push the a squared to the other side so it picks up a minus sign. Now, we apply completing square to f of x, and that's going to give us x minus 1 squared minus 9. Then our vertex is going to be the point which makes the square term equal to 0. So we're going to have our vertex at 1 comma minus 9. That means if we put in our horizontal lines, we're going to have intercepts for the graph all the way down until I hit minus 9. So our range is going to be y greater than or equal to minus 9. Now, if we invert our function, so I have 1 over x squared minus 2x minus 8, we get the graph by using technology or by noting key features on the parabola. So we have x-intercepts at minus 2 and 4. We have our vertex at 1 comma minus 9. When we invert, the x-intercepts, okay, we're zeros. We're going to go to vertical asymptotes. So we'll draw those in. For all other points, keep the same x value, but we send y to 1 over y. So for our vertex, 1 comma minus 9 goes to 1 comma minus 1 ninth. Okay, so we'll put that point in also. Now, for the other points, I want to send y to 1 over y. 
So positive y goes to positive values, negative y goes to negative values. So we note what's happening with the parabola. So in this region positive, this region negative y, this region positive y. So we mark them off on each region where we split by our vertical asymptotes. Now we can use the vertical asymptotes to get an idea of what our graph looks like. So if I'm near a vertical asymptote, we can determine positive or negative infinity by looking at okay, the sign on a given side. So here, we have to go to positive infinity as we come into four from the right. Then we have minus infinity, minus infinity, positive infinity. So here we can just connect the dots and we have an idea of what our function looks like in this region. For the outside regions, we just need to know what's happening as we let x go to plus or minus infinity. Okay, and I'll note here, for growth at infinity, I just need to consider the lead term. So it's like we're really looking at one over x squared. So that means, function is going to go off to zero in either direction. So we'll connect arrows like this. Okay, also note, okay, let's check, always positive, always positive, always negative. So it's a crude idea of our graph. Now, we apply our two tests. For the vertical line test, okay, we're going to cut every point on our graph except where x is equal to minus 2 or 4. So our domain is just x not equal to minus 2 or 4. For our range, we use horizontal lines. Okay, we're going to cut our graph okay, coming down. We'll have all y greater than 0. Okay, we won't have 0 in there. And then we're going to go down and we won't have anything until I get to minus 1 9. So minus 1 9 is going to be in our range. And then if I keep going, we're going to go down to minus infinity. So for our range, we have y greater than 0 and y less than or equal to minus 1 ninth. If we use numerical methods, we need to be careful with the inequalities in the range. Now, for the domain, we're just going to take all x where the denominator is non-zero. So we'll have all x except where x is minus 2 or 4. And that agrees with our graphical method. For the range, what we'll do is we're going to take the range that goes with the parabola, so y greater than or equal to minus 9. Then we're going to replace y with 1 over y, except when y is 0. Now, if I take y greater than or equal to minus 9 and replace y with 1 over y, okay, if you work out what this region is, we'll see that it's not equal to the answer that we got using graphical methods. So that means there's a problem with the switch here. Now, what's happening? We have zero in our range here. So when we invert our numbers, okay, that's zero. Okay, you think of that as going to plus minus infinity. We have positive numbers and negative numbers in this range near zero. So what's happening is, Okay, well, we have this interval. We're going to cut it at this point, and then we're going to turn it inside out. So we expect to get two pieces when we send y to 1 over y. Now, to fix this, we're going to split it up into three pieces. So we'll have a positive, a negative, and a zero piece. For the negative piece, we're considering minus 9 less than or equal to y less than 0. Okay, for 0, we have y equals 0. For the positive piece, we have 0 less than y less than plus infinity. So we're just going to replace y with 1 over y. Okay, we'll do the same for the endpoints, and then we'll see what regions come out. Now, for the positive piece, okay, we have to think heuristically here. If I have 1 over 0, that goes to infinity. Okay, and here we're only considering positive numbers, so it goes to plus infinity the infinity is going to go to 0. So here we'll have 1 over y between 0 and infinity, which means we have all positive numbers. For the 0, 1 over 0 is undefined, so we just leave it alone. And then for our negative numbers, I'm going to send minus 9 to minus 1 over 9. 0, again, is going to go to infinity. Since here we're dealing with negative numbers, it's going to go to minus infinity. 
So our one over y is gonna to go to numbers between minus infinity and minus one over nine, including the minus one over nine. So in this picture, all we're doing, taking our points, we think of them as going in this direction, then when we flip over, they're gonna go in this direction. So you'll note, if we take these two pieces, they agree with our answer using the graph. 